So aircraft is washed. We use the citrus to get all the staining and oils and exhaust off. Then I went back over it with a damp cloth of just water just to pull that soapy residue off and, and anything else that might be left on the surface. Um, I actually already polished the whole left side. I just didn't film it. Um, but here's what we're doing. So I found there's so much oxidation coming off that it's rendering those pads pretty useless quickly. So I'm using the dual action with a wool pad and I might work an area this big, wash pads. Uh, with the rotary, that just bogs down the whole polishing process. So the dual action is a little bit better because it kind of has this planing, scrubbing action um, to knock that oxidation off. So the first pass is really more of a knockdown pass. We're taking off that oxidation, taking off the staining, um, kind of deeper scratches are addressed. Then um, we go over it again with the yellow pad to refine the surface more. So now because we don't have all this loose stuff on here, that yellow pad can really focus on polishing and getting a nice smooth finish. So kind of a two step, not really. We're still using hyper polish for both steps, but it's actually giving us better results in less time than if I was one stepping it because I'd be spending a lot more time on each section and I'd be washing pads more. So um, I'll show you what that looks like. Again, the left side's already done. It looks really good. You can actually tell from above the left side's plane's a lot whiter and shinier. So we've got a great little demonstration area here. Um, you saw the red was kind of dull and scratchy and the black especially, we'll zoom in on the black here. But the whites, um, even though it's not really showing up here, are pretty dull and they're somewhat yellowed as well. So we got, we got lots of uh, defects to work with here. So let's go to town on it, see what happens. So this, right off the bat, a lot smoother. Um, this side is a lot wider as well, and a lot of these kind of superficial scratches are gone. There's some deeper scratches left. We're not going to chase those. That's kind of a fool's errand. Down here, the black is a lot more um, clear, so the metallic flake is popping out a lot more, which is cool, and um, it, it just, it, it's actually darker because those tiny little scratches aren't refracting light so we can actually see what the paint's supposed to look like. Um, this is looking really good. Like I said, after this cutting step we go back over it real quick and uh, use a soft pad just to make sure that that finish is as clear as possible and uh, after that coating. So the fuselage is polished, even the underside. It's not quite panel wiped yet, but as is usual for me, I don't feel like coating right now. It's 8.30, coating that's gonna be like four hours and I just don't wanna do that right now. But I do still wanna be productive, so I'm working on the wing tops. I got the other side polished already. Got this sweet little test spot up here. Um, and you can see, it's pretty dramatic. That yellowish, lack of reflection that's because of oxidation and we've removed that oxidation there's good paint underneath there now removing that oxidation of course the oxidation ends up in our polishing pads which is why it's so important to frequently clean I'll show you we'll, we'll polish a little section here and you can see how quickly those pads load up um, after this step we're going to do a quick finishing polish with the foam pad which is going to be a more gentle polish but because all of that oxidation is gone the polishing pad can actually do its job in refining the surface rather than removing oxidation. It's just one of those little things that's going to make that wing look another 10% better. Once that's done, um, panel wipe and coating. Now, the underside of the wings still need to be done. I don't know if I'll get to that tonight or not, but overall, I'm pretty well on track to get this done when I want to get it done. So I might just polish the wings. Reassess how I feel, me posture on the other side, and then call it good for the night. So we'll see. Clean pad going in.
had coming out. Um, that was just that little section we did. Luckily we got a hose so we can actually like jet blast them out. Just put a little no rinse on there and then blow them out with the water and then uh, spin dry them in the bucket. So just like the corners of the armrest, this is another PA46 kind of trouble spot, which is the taxi light lenses. You can see the tops always get oxidized and they turn yellow and reduce light output. So we're going to polish this, remove that oxidation, improve the light output and just make everything look better. If you were to try this yourself, um, just be careful not to generate too much heat, especially with a rotary. If you're running it at too fast of a speed or you're putting down too much pressure, you can actually cause enough heat to cause crazing in these lenses and then you have to replace them. So just be careful, keep it cool, um, do multiple corrections instead of one heavy one. So after the whole wing gets compounded with that wool pad, we go over it again with the softer yellow pad and that just pulls out a little bit more gloss. Sometimes that wool pad can cause a little bit of uh, micro marring. So this will ensure we get the best possible finish. To validate that, we panel wipe. So we're using this alcohol solution, pull out any polishing oils, um, any residue that might be on that paint that could give us a false sense of shine. So this way we're looking at perfectly naked paint. Then coating time. So last week I was in Flint. It was kind of cold in the hangar. Um, I wouldn't say it's warm, but it's humid. It's been raining all day. And because of that, I have to adjust how big of a section I can coat and more importantly how quickly I have to wipe it back off because it, it cures a lot faster and if you're not on top of your game you're going to get um, streaks and haziness and cloudiness and that kind of stuff so um, sometimes it's easy sometimes it's a little more involved to coat these things. The other thing that helps is using an excess of liquid um, or an excess of coating so it's plenty wet and it doesn't have a chance to dry out quite as quickly. But you bet when this plane's done, we're gonna give it a really good once over to make sure we don't have any hazy spots, especially in transition areas. So this is coated, this just got coated. This area up here is at a higher risk for hazy overlap or smudges, that kind of stuff. The other challenge then when you're working smaller sections is that you really have to keep your system of what is coated, what is not coated. Uh, so you don't want to get distracted and think about other things because you're going to forget to coat an area and that's not good. So luckily we can feel the difference in surface slickness and based on that tell what is coated and what isn't. But I also try and use lines in the airplane, panel lines, paint lines to mark where I start and stop.
And like I said, pretty thorough inspection on this plane because of the high humidity. And sure enough, we found a smudge. It looks like I just overlapped a little bit too much or didn't wipe fast enough. And you know, this is only a few hours old, but I'm using the heavy wool pad and really leaning into that to get that um, coating residue to come off. In some cases, you, you actually have to sand it off. So I, I got lucky here that I caught it fast enough where I can still compound it off. Then we wipe the residue, panel wipe the area again, and uh, recoat. Now that this part is properly coated, this plane is actually done. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, we'll see you at the next one. Enjoy the beauty shots.